Quasi-experimental designs are what happen when you lose one of the two requirements for full experimental designs. We already mentioned before that if three criteria for full experimental designs are, um, well, if you think about the RCT, it would be randomization control group and uh, T for trial and intervention. Obviously, you cannot use the intervention, otherwise the study will no longer be experimental design. Therefore, you might lose your control group or you might lose your randomization. The first design we're going to talk about is called the non, the, I mean, the quasi, sorry, the non-equivalent control group. And basically what happens is that in a study, you are you, you have a control group and you have an experimental group, but you're not able to randomize people into either arm. And therefore, if you remember, we talked about what's the aim of randomization. We said the aim of randomization is to make sure that the two groups are equivalent at baseline, therefore making them equivalent at baseline. Therefore, if you lose your randomization, you're no longer able to make the statement that your control and your experimental group are uh, equivalent. Therefore, this design is called a non-equivalent control group design. And basically, it looks like this. You start up with uh, to, with putting people into two arms of your study, your experimental and your control group. However, you're doing it in such a way that it's done without randomization. And once you do that, you end up with two groups. One group is experimental and one is control. And you would uh, you would worry about the fact that maybe these two groups are not equivalent at baseline. Therefore, a very important thing to do is this observation that is done before you start your intervention. And this observation is basically where you're going to give a stab at trying to see if there are if there are substantial differences between the two groups at the beginning of the study, or the, or actually they're they're pretty similar. And what you're going to compare them with, you're going to compare them with. Obviously, the basic thing is are the baseline characteristics, but also you try to compare them with your outcome variable if your outcome variable is measurable at baseline. Yani if your outcome variable is going to be some sort of, um, uh, let's say, uh, blood pressure that you're trying to reduce or maybe a certain type of uh, flexibility, activity, quality of life, and you're trying to improve, then um, then these types of measures uh, are, are present at baseline. Therefore, you can measure them, and then you would do your intervention for the experimental group, and then you would wait and do your observation at time two. And here, obviously, you're measuring your outcome, and you're going to compare your outcome in the experimental and control group. And because you already measured what happened before the intervention, you can make uh, an argument that if actually they turn out to be similar, that there was no major difference between the two groups at the beginning of the study. Now, this is called non-equivalent control group design. It's a, it's a quasi-experimental. If for a certain reason you, you, you were not able to do the observation before the intervention and you're not able to compare them before the intervention, then your design drops down a, a level and it becomes a pre-experimental. So uh, the example we have here is an example where administrations are trying to introduce a certain, um, uh, let's say, uh, a, a process, a new uh, way to doing things, and you want to see, they want to see how this is going to impact the morale or the uh, the satisfaction or the stress of their staff, and they're doing that in a hospital because you cannot randomize um, nurses to be either apply or not apply the new procedure. What you're going to do is you're going to apply your new procedure or your new policy parts of the hospitals and part of the hospital and you're not going to do it. Therefore, a nurse will not be randomized. Rather, a whole floor will be receiving or not receiving this new uh, policy. And uh, therefore, what is important is before you introduce the policy, you need to measure whatever your outcome is. Uh, if it's uh, stre job stress or is it job satisfaction or is it morale, you need to measure that uh, in the two in the two area or the two floors that you're going to compare at the later point to see were they similar to start with well halia tara nurses working in the maternity for example floor um, actually have a higher morale higher job satisfaction than those working with let's say internal medicine floor uh, if that is the case if the, your starting point is different and you did not measure that you did not assess what is happening before then your your design is actually called uh, a pre-experimental design, it's not a quasi-experimental design.
Now here's a question. Um, then the, the pretest should look at what the outcome, the intervention, or other general characteristics. I hope I already answered that question. Obviously, it's the outcome whenever it's possible. If your outcome is something that happens only one time, uh, then you cannot measure that outcome because it hasn't happened yet. But if your outcome is something where you're going to change the level of it, the 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 strength of it, then you need to look at that at baseline. Obviously, intervention is not what you're going to look at. Um, before intervention, but general characteristics is always a yes. Always look at general characteristics at baseline. Okay, so as I said, if 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 you're missing the 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 measurement pretest, then it becomes a pre-experimental design. Okay, now there is an there is another type of quasi-experimental design, and this is where you remember we said there are two things that you can lose uh, other than the intervention, which you cannot lose otherwise not an intervention study. If you lose randomization, then it's a non-equivalent group. Well, what is the other thing you can use? Uh, you can lose, I mean, well, you can lose your control group. Yeah, I mean, you could ha you can uh, not have a control group at all, and therefore um, you, you, it's a quasi-experimental design. Uh, the reason you would you would have some, some something like that is is when you're also trying to mesalan bring a new system, a new procedure or you're going to do something and there's no way that you're going to have a control group or you cannot have a control group you don't have resources to have a control group in that case what you need to do is you need to do a case series and yani you need to do multiple measurements of your outcome of uh, your independent your dependent variable uh, before intervention then you introduce intervention and you do multiple measure of your inter your outcome after the intervention. So, for example, if I want to know um, again how much stress is there uh, among students studying pharmacy at LAU, and uh, in, in, in my intervention is going to be a changing the curriculum, for example. Well, I cannot randomize students into new curriculum and old curriculum. So, what I do is I measure the stress level of students at multiple point in times for maybe like two three years if um, I'm hoping this is something that is done routinely. And then what I do is I change the curriculum. And again, I look at the stress level of students, again, multiple times, first year, second year, third year, to establish a very good idea of what happened before and what is happening after my intervention. So here's um, here's a, uh, a, a display, a figure showing a design. But you will notice here that there's no multiple observation before and no multiple observation afterwards. And this is uh, a way to explain why we need, the, we need the multiple observation. So the first blue line up here is just time passing. And you have three different scenarios. And let's say what you're looking at is, let's say, stress. Okay, And stress could be maybe uh, high. And then you introduce your intervention, the stress goes down and remains down, which is perfect. This is what you want to happen. Stress could be something that is actually, ha um, it goes up and down. So there are times where stress is up and then times where stress is down. And it goes up and down, up and down. And you do your intervention and then you observe. Or you can have stress that is high. You do intervention, it goes down for a while and then it goes up again. Well, you can clearly see that these three scenarios are quite different. The first scenario, you have an intervention that not only is successful, but also is maintained over time. The second example, you have an intervention that didn't do anything. The third example is you have an intervention that did have an impact, but it didn't stay for long. If you have just one observation during the intervention, so you're interfering and then you're observing, the three will look exactly the same to you and you won't be able to differentiate between the three scenarios. Therefore, what you need to do is this. Introduce multiple observation before, multiple observation after. And then you can actually have a good idea of what is happening before and what happened afterwards. And therefore, figure out that actually you have either uh, an intervention that was sustainable or not sustainable. Well, this, if you do that, if you do a time series, that would be considered a quasi-experimental. If you don't do multiple observation before and multiple observation afterwards, then your design will drop down to a pre-experimental design, therefore a lower level of designs. Now here's a question. Um, here you have two scenarios, two interventions, and uh, uh, one that had multiple observation before, the intervention occurred, 
and then whatever you were measuring, maybe like stress went down, but it went up again and it stayed up. Whereas in the second scenario, you had maybe stress that was high. You did an intervention, it went down and it remained down for a long period of time. But you only observed one time, which is after the intervention. Which of the two is considered quasi-experimental and which of the two is considered pre-experimental? And the answer is, well, it doesn't depend on whether your intervention actually had a good outcome or not. It depends on how you did your study. The first example is the quasi-experimental because it had multiple observation before and multiple observation after, even though the intervention didn't have a sustainable um, impact, even though the second one had a sustainable impact. So even though maybe the intervention is a better intervention than the second scenario, the design is quasi-experimental in the first one and pre-experimental in the second one. Okay, so... Um, this way, we have concluded the, the, the quasi-experimental and pre-experimental part of the lecture.